Hey, I'm Mark, and we're on the back side of Solar Array. I'm going to show you the quick hookup, and then we're going to walk up to the batteries. I'll show you how to hook up the batteries and the inverter. This is a 108 cell panel, each 36 cells has its own diode and wired separately, and then all of those wires come to a terminal block. And then from the terminal block, all each panel has its own terminal block, and all these number 12 wires come into a bus bar. And each wire simply hooks in all the positive one side and all the negative to another, and then it jumps up to a number four aluminum. Uh, this is a couple hundred feet up to my battery, so I want to go with a big enough wire to handle all the amperage. Um, also, this system is hooked into a hydro generator, which is going to be on our next video. Um, we're going to walk up to the batteries now. Hey, we're up here at the uh, battery bank, and uh, I have a 12-volt system. <clears throat> I'm using a Ames 5000 watt converter. Uh, I've been real pleased with it. Uh, I started out with this system in a nice little neat room, shingled roof. Everything mounted nice and neat on shelves, and I was having trouble with the battery terminals were constantly corroding. Um, birds were flying in in the spring and building their nests on top of the inverter. In the fall, squirrels were bringing nuts, uh, chewing on the wires, and it was a constant headache with the animals. And little centipedes were climbing inside the inverter and sorting out stuff. So I abandoned that whole system and just uh, left the batteries out in the open. I never have to clean the terminals now. Um, I found out by mounting the inverter upside down at about 60 degrees that no squirrel, bird, rat, anything wants to build their nest on it or in it. I also added uh, my own screen over all the vents on the inverter to keep centipedes out because they'll get in there and short the thing and real aggravating. Um, the batteries, these are all 12 volt batteries, they're hooked in parallel. I do have four 6 volt batteries. There's two 6 volts here wired in series. So this is positive to negative. And um, then you go from your positive up to the, in front, up to the uh, inverter. And then your negative up to the inverter, and that gives you 12 volts. Same system, those are wired uh, separate so that you get the 12 volts. You don't want to go to 24, and if you can't get these six, um, if you are in a 24 volt system, then you hook all four six volts in series to come up to 24 volts. I just stayed with a simple 12 volt system. All your parts are cheap, and everything you can find is pretty simple to run on 12 volts. This system works real well. It's been here for years. Uh, also, another problem I eliminated was when it, uh, we have a flash of lightning, it could be a mile or two away. This inverter was so sensitive that it shut off. And I was constantly coming out here and switching the thing back on. So what I did is I built a Faraday cage, which is basically a, a copper wire run on top of this board to keep it dry. And uh, it takes all the magnetic and static electricity from the air and runs it to the ground. I haven't had it trip one time since I've done that. I've been real pleased with it. Um, I have a digital amp meter. You can see I'm running around 12 amps right now. Um, it's real foggy. It's early in the morning. This is coming from my hydro generator, which we're going to show in the following video. Uh, I'm going to take you around to the other side now and show you the charge controller. Um, that it's a real simple hookup, positive to positive, negative to negative, and all these batteries, and then they all do the bus terminal. Again, these little terminals are really easy for hooking lots of wires. I um, mean, you got to step up to a, a big uh, six aught gauge wire to run the inverter. Now, I got a big 5,000 watt inverter. I'm only running two refrigerators, freezer, and some lights, but kick off a freezer or refrigerator takes a lot of power. Uh, a little 3,000 watt 
everything else was running, the freezer would kick on or go in the defrost cycle, it kept stripping it out. So I had to go up to a 5,000 watt inverter. Been out here for years. It uh, seems to be pretty foolproof that we're using this system. Also, when you hook in a amp meter, you have to wire in a shunt. This is a 150 amp shunt. Uh, it keeps from burning up your sensitive equipment. Got to have one. This is my charge controller. Um, it's a Coleman Air C80. It um, has a little blinking light that tells you the charge level of your battery so you know where you're at at any given time. I can simply look out my window and count the blink. Um, this hooks to the battery and not to the solar panel or uh, the gen or, or the windmill or the hydro generator. Um, you want to keep a constant load, if you had a windmill, you want to keep a constant load on your windmill so it doesn't turn too fast. The uh, solar panels, you can wire straight into this and it simply disconnects them. It, this model has an option for both. Um, when you're charging batteries, uh, your battery is like a hungry man. If he's hungry, he eats fast. If he's not hungry, he eats slow. So no matter how many solar panels and how much amperage you're pushing into them, if the batteries are f almost full, it has a hard time filling them up that last 10%. If the batteries are low, this thing's only blinking three times, they're hungry, you're getting more efficiency out of it. Um, it's able to absorb the amperage. Uh, I like to run in the 60 to 80% range. It's the most efficient. Uh, first thing in the morning, we're going to be around three blinks, which is 60%. And then by the end of the day, we'll be 80, 90% before we go in the night. Um, to protect my batteries from overcharging, this, if the batteries get fully charged, this <clears throat> will be a solid light. This red light will come on and it dumps the power into this old solar motor got out of the junkyard you can use any kind of a, a device heater or anything to dump the load you just want to make sure whatever you use doesn't fall apart on you or fail because you can ruin your battery and you can test your system by simply pushing the button you hold it down and that's draining about 20 amps out of my batteries it runs for three or four seconds and then it'll shut itself off and you know your system's good. And that protects your batteries from overcharging.